Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Sly 2 Band of Thieves. Last time, we took part in the Lumberjack games in an attempt to get the Clockwork Towns from John Basson. However, that didn't go quite as well as planned. We lost the Talons, we lost all the other Clockwork parts that we have worked to get throughout this entire adventure, and worst of all, we lost the Team Van. But all is not lost completely because we were able to stow away onto Arpeggio's blimp in hopes of getting those clockwork parts back and also maybe swipe for clockwork sprain. All we can really hope now is the fact that the clockwork hasn't been put together because all his things are back in one place and it looks like Arpeggio might be the kind of person who would try to put them back together for whatever reason. So, with that said and done, it's time to start the final chapter of the game and see if we have what it takes to handle and an anatomy for disaster. There we were, heading east across the Atlantic Ocean, stowaways on a giant airborne fortress. Though time was short, we made sure to study up on our unknowing host, Arpeggio. While attending a prestigious boarding school, the young Arpeggio excelled in all subjects but he never managed to keep up with the other boys physically. Sadly, his wings, due to their small size, were useless for flight. Furious at his feeble body, he focused his powerful mind to search for a cure in the works of the Italian Renaissance masters. Their notebooks provided the springboard for this sinister young genius, and it wasn't long before the claw gang took him on as chief inventor. His talents must have been at work repurposing all the clockwork parts for their criminal schemes. And now this mastermind is in possession of all the parts. It's only a matter of time before he puts them back together. And when that happens, well, I'm not gonna let that happen. I was always terrible when it came to anatomy at school. Alright, well, seeing as how we are already here, we might as well head on out to do some recon, as well as talk a little bit about the level, and also, you know, uh, get some mini clue bottles that are around here, because I'm just gonna say this right now. Well, I did have some trouble during Chapter 3 and Chapter 7 of this game for... Really? I got detected already? That... Who saw me? You. You saw me. Excuse me. I would... Uh, you know what? Just do this. There we go. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, when it came to finding clue bottles, Chapter 3 and Chapter 7 were kind of the the hardest for me to remember where most of the stuff are, but muscle memory kind of kicked in for the most part. Chapter 8 of this game definitely has... is the ultimate chapter of I forget where these clue bottles are except for, like, four. There's, like... A very small number of clue bottles that I for I just for the life of me always cannot remember where they are and I think it has something to do with the layout of this level this is basically a three tiered level right here it, it's not that big actually the only thing you really have to worry about for it is the fact that there is a lot of bottomless pits here like oh my god there are so many bottomless pits and I'll be honest, while it is a cool setting for a final chapter of the game, at the same time, I just don't like the layout of it. I don't know why. I think it's just because there's like a whole lot of nothing around here. It's just metal catwalks, balloons, guards everywhere, and that's about it. it it's visually, aside from the fact that we are, you can see like the rest of the world around us as we're going across the Atlantic, which I feel like, you know... Location-wise, this doesn't seem correct, but whatever. It, it just seems like a really boring level layout compared to the last couple of areas we've been in. in even, I would say, the prison level in this game is still a better level than this. That being said, the, the missions for this are actually pretty fun, and it also changes my opinion about a certain type of mechanic in this game. But other than that, I really don't have much else to say. Alright, so, uh, we need to head on over to there, but before we do so, there, there's a couple clue bottles we can still snag along the way. One of which 
is right up there. I can't get it though because it's just out of Sly's jump range. There is an ability that we can get. I know for a fact that we don't have the money for it, so I'll go over that stuff uh, next time. And maybe we'll get a little bit more money under our belt. But yeah, you can't get it with Sly. You can get it with Bentley if you have the hover pack with him, but I kind of want, but seeing as how we don't have Bentley with us, we can't really, you know, use him to get it until we're done with the recon. So I think instead we're just going to grab any clue bottles that may be on our way there, and we'll just uh, get that one when we come back to this area. Let's see, just hop on over here. Uh, there's one up there. You know what? I'm going to go snag that one real quick. Do, 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 do. There we go. Fly on down here. Jump onto this thing because this thing rotates back and forth. And it, it's really hard to determine when it, it's actually safe to jump on this thing because for the most part, I've always misjudged the location of the the spinner right here and i've ended up falling to the other floor down below and getting caught by so many guards so yeah uh, just snag his treasure and take him out and over here yep there's the clanking like i said a lot of bombless pits around here in fact this is probably the most dangerous level in the entire game just due to the fact that you can easily either run off the edge by accident or you will uh, miss a jump and end up falling to your death. But as we're going through here, heading off to grab the last couple of cool bottles in this area before we go and do the recon, I want to make a note of something with this level. And that's the fact that this level only has two guard types in it. And I guess aside from the prologue, it's the only other level that does this, even though the prologue only had the flashlight guards in it. This one is also weird for the fact that it's only one guard species. Like how the Enforcer, Reinforcer, and Flashlight guards were all different species for the past level. And this one, it's just these little toucan guys, except for the fact that the Flashlight guards, they're wearing stilts. And have guns and searchlights on their backs. I feel like they could have done a little bit more with different types of birds. Hell, maybe have changed the Contessa's flashlight guards to be the guards for this. And, like, I don't know, gave them more high-tech weaponry. All right, uh, before we do that, uh, there's a clue bottle up there. And I think there's another one over on those back fins? Wings? What the hell are these things supposed to be? Yeah, well, whatever. It has a clue bottle. I want it. Now, with that said and done, let's head on back over here, fly on down over here, and head on into this recon. My instruments have picked up large magnetic fields radiating from inside that blimp. If Arpeggio's already started reassembling clockwork, that's where you'll find him. Sounds good. I'm on my way. Don't waste any time here, Sly. Get to the blimp and take some recon photos. To build a plan, we need to know how close they are to reviving clockwork. Relax, Bentley. I've got it under control. Alright. Just flying over here because Arpeggio was so kind as to move his HQ blimp down to a level where we can actually fly on over to it. Just make our way over onto the wing of this thing. And there's something I want to note. This HQ blimp right here is only going to be available to us during this recon. However, it feels like there was more they were going to do with it just because, well, you can, you know, rail walk on all the, the railings and the the support strut, struts for this and also the, the, like, wires running across to the back of the blimp right here. There's nothing over here. There is, it's literally a pointless area, but for whatever reason, you're able to travel to it. So either A, there was supposed to be more to this uh, blimp and they just decided to cut it out for whatever reason, or B, uh, which is probably the more likely of thing, uh, it's just coded to, to those types of rails, so they just kept it in for everything like that. Right. Let's just hop on over here onto this gigantic cannon. It feels like this thing would not do any good rotating, seeing as how there's an air vent at uh, attached to the top of this. I feel like I should... Actually, well, can I? Nope, I can't. No, I can't. Oh, wait. Oh, no. 
And this is why you shouldn't be daring. All right, let's head in. down, Bentley. He might be in one piece, but he doesn't appear to be, you know, alive. Let's stick to the format here. How about some recon photos? You're right. We need to be informed to create a plan of action. Try to get a shot of Clockwork's head, a mech egg, and one of those spinning magnetic inducers. They seem important to the procedure, but stay away from the guards. If you get detected, we won't have time for a second chance. All right, simple enough. Just take some recon photos and don't get caught. I'm sensing radioactivity from inside those mech eggs. I wouldn't get too close. I feel like this would be the most dangerous recon we've done in this entire game, which makes sense. We're on a very tight schedule to figure out what to do since Clockwork's basically back in one piece at this point because all the other recons don't involve us having to avoid flashlight guards as we take the photos. All right, now for the hardest thing to get a picture of is these uh, magnets. There we go. These magnetic inducers seem to be holding the clockwork parts together. As annoying as to take a picture of like the spinner was back in the last episode's recon, but I guess with the fact that they're bit pretty big, they're actually pretty easy to handle. But they also move pretty fast, so, you know, there's also that to take into effect. Clockwork appears completely inanimate. We still might have a chance. Sly, I'm detecting voices from the front of the blimp. I think it's Arpeggio. Not only is Clockwork put together, they really downsized him because the last time we've uh, dealt with Clockwork, he was about as big as this blimp himself, but they really, you know, downsized him to, like, pocket-sized clockwork. Well, not maybe pocket-sized, but you know what I mean. I guess maybe it's just supposed to be in tandem of the, the, the size of the parts that we've gotten, because that's definitely the size of the eyes that we got when we stole them during the Contestas level. The, the wings band actually looks about the size we did when we stole them from Rajan's Palace, and when we get back to the tail feathers, they look absolutely nothing like what we stole from Dimitri. And it's kind of hard to see the lungs at the stomach. And the talons also look absolutely nothing like what Jambasan had. Mila? Mila's here too! Hmm. I always knew she was up to no good. But to work with Arpeggio? For shame. I can't believe it! She must have been working with Arpeggio all along! She's played us this entire time. Source of all our problems. I don't need to study those photos to see the writing on the wall. Clearly, Neela and Arpeggio have conspired together to rebuild Clockwork, and it looks like they're dangerously close to realizing their goal. Look, Bentley, I know it's not your style, but I need a quick plan of attack. Try to think of a way, any way, to stop Clockwork from getting reassembled. Well, those magnetic inducers seem to be holding the parts together. If you reverse their polarity, it should pull clockwork apart. Unfortunately, the inducer speed control station is locked down tight. Pickpocket keys for the four patrolling guards to get at it. Then you'll need to manually reverse the polarity of each inducer deck at the top of their rotation. Consider it done. Sly, do you really think this is a good idea? Last time you made Bentley panic and try to figure out what to do on the fly to so figure out a problem. Didn't go so well for you guys. In fact, it's how we got into this mess in the first place. Oh, well, I'm sure nothing bad will ever happen. I mean, what has Sly ever been wrong about anything? All right, so we're just gonna start pickpocketing keys. I believe if we actually do take out a guard, even after we take the keys from them, then it still counts as us failing because the guards have been alerted. All right, let's sneak on over here. Oh, wait. Snag the key from you. Thank you very much. 
I know it's probably just the lighting's doing for this area, but it honestly looked like Sly's teeth were transparent for a second. Alright, let's see. Where's the flat? Alright, they're patrolling over there, so I think I can get this guy before he turns around. Just snag that. There we go. Now get to the speed control Ooh, boy. station to slow down the spinning and do Thankfully, they give you a lot of hiding places for, for this area to avoid the guards. You got a lot of tables. You got those two barrels in the middle, which honestly don't really help out a whole lot, especially with the fact that you can't actually move when you're wearing them or when you're inside them. Right, let's slow down these inducers. I'm sure no one heard that. Now that the inducer decks are spinning slower, get up there and reverse the polarity of each deck. Oh, seems simple enough, Bentley. But uh, what's the catch? Ooh, the catch is maybe I can actually get this one at a decent time. Oh boy. Always feels weird jumping onto these things because again, I just get paranoid at the fact that I'm gonna slide off the edge and then I'm gonna have to deal with the guards down there. Or, you know, take more fall damage because we've already done that enough today. Over there. They're actually pretty lenient when it comes to the safe spot to jump onto these things. Thankfully. Alright, just wait for that one to start rolling back up here. That's one of the biggest issues with this is the fact that when you slow them down, they really do slow down. So it takes a while for you to just sit here and wait for them to get up to the right height. There we go. Press that. Play over here. And one more should do it. Oh boy. Ah, oh, thank goodness those barrels are still in one piece. Then the magnets have been reversed. But by Jove, it seems to have locked the clockwork parts into place. Excellent. Sly Cooper, of course, this would be your doing. Ah, Mr. Cooper. No doubt you believed a reversal would pull the old bird apart, eh? <laughs> but it seems to have had quite the opposite effect. I'm truly grateful. When fully powered up, I'll join myself to its circuit and be born anew! All this because you can't fly. You're pathetic. Immortality! Immortality is what I seek. The other Claw Game members were much too short-sighted. They were satisfied using the clockwork parts to drive their various trivial schemes. But not me. No. I saw them for what they really were. The keys to life eternal. So, what? You had Neela put me on the scent back in Cairo, and then waited while I stole the parts from the other Claw Gang members, all the while not arousing any suspicion that you were behind it all? You make it sound easy, Koopa. I had to carry your pathetic gang through that first set of heists. I was overjoyed when Arpeggio let me toss you in jail. I could finally go after the parts myself. Ah, but acquiring all the parts was only half the equation. Think, Koopa, what kept Clockwork alive for thousands of years? He was fueled by his hatred for my family. Splendid, that's right, hatred. Putting his gears and wires together was child's play compared with accumulating that much hatred. You can't make people hate. Oh, my poor naive boy. My meticulous mind has found a way. As your hippopotamus friend will attest, spice consumption makes you both angry and susceptible to hypnosis. The Contessa, hypnotist extraordinaire, devised a way to command people through the use of flashing lights. I've created this blimp to be a massive transmitter of those precise light frequencies. The only problem I faced was finding a suitable source of light waves. The Northern Lights. 
You've been collecting northern light energy so you could hypnotize everyone beneath the blimp. Ah, hypnotize those who'd eaten food covered in illegal spice. Thank goodness for Dimitri. Through his nightclub, he got the whole city to consume the spice. You're going to Paris to unleash a hypnotic light show of hate. That's outlandishly cruel. Cruel, perhaps, but necessary to give clockwork his spark of immortality. Ah well, my new body awaits me. Be a dear, Mila, and keep him covered. Ta-ta! Stupid arpeggio. I double-crossed the Cooper gang, Interpol, and Carmelita. What made you think I wouldn't do the same to you? This is preposterous! You're my protege! Not the next candidate for my immortality! I demand you exit the clockwork frame or... or... As we all know, things are looking grim. Neela has joined herself to the clockwork frame and the Union has produced Clockla. She's out and free to terrorize the world. This blimp is still in motion to Paris. I can only assume Arpeggio's autopilot will activate the hate hypnosis light show. If that happens, there will be no stopping Clockla. She'll be immortal. But we still have a chance. In her new form, she'll need to draw a lot of energy from this blimp's engines to stay strong. If we can disable the engines, that should be enough to weaken her to a state in which we can attack. Getting at these engines will require all three of us to work together in perfect harmony. We've pulled off some tough jobs in the past. But they were just a warm-up round for what we'll be going through tonight.